This presentation is on simplified sewerage and it's divided into four parts. First of all, an introduction and properties of, of a circular section. Then the design based on a minimum self-cleansing velocity. Then the design based on minimum tractive tension. And then finally a case study, simplified sewerage in Brazil, where it was first developed in the early 1980s. In peri-urban areas of developing countries, sanitation is usually very inadequate. Raw wastewater is discharged into open stormwater drains, if there are any. These pictures are from Indonesia and Bangladesh, but really they could be from anywhere. This slide shows a very typical high-density peri-urban area. It happens to be in Manila in the Philippines. And it shows us that there's really no space at all for on-site sanitation systems. These are favelas or hillside slums in Rio de Janeiro and again there's very little space for on-site sanitation. So simplified sewerage <laughs> conveys unsettled wastewater and it's essentially conventional sewerage stripped down to its hydraulic basics, that is to say without any of the very conservative design features and rules of thumb that have accrued with conventional sewerage over the last 100 or 150 years. It's sometimes called condominial sewerage, and it used to be called shallow sewerage. Condominial in-block sewerage is suitable for both unplanned areas, where it would normally be retrofitted, and also for planned areas with a more regular housing layout. This slide shows simplified sewerage being installed in Sri Lanka in a new housing estate. And this slide shows slum networking in India, which is the Indian term for simplified sewerage or condominial sewerage in slum areas in that country. Condominial or simplified sewerage was developed in the city of Natal in northeast Brazil in the early 1980s. This chart shows how the costs per household vary with population density. At population densities below about 100 people per hectare, both conventional and simplified sewerage are very expensive. But at a population density above about 160 people per hectare, simplified sewerage became, in this particular case, cheaper than on-site sanitation systems. And this is really a very important finding, and it leads us to the conclusion that in high-density, low-income, peri-urban areas, which we find all over the developing world, simplified sewerage is most likely to be the sanitation technology of first choice. Before we can design a simplified sewer, we must have a good understanding of the geometric properties of a circular section. This is because the small sewers that we use are circular in cross-section and the wastewater flows in them under gravity with a free water surface. So first of all, to define the terms, A is the area of flow and P is the wetted perimeter. The ratio A over P is called the hydraulic radius and is denoted by the letter R. Little d is the depth of wastewater flow in the sewer and big D is the sewer diameter, and the ratio D over D is called the proportional depth of flow. B is the breadth of flow, and theta is the angle of flow measured in radians, and there are two pi radians in 360 degrees. So the angle of flow theta is 2 cos to the minus 1 of 1 minus 2 d over d in radians. The area of flow is d squared times theta minus sine theta divided by 8, and the wetted perimeter is d theta over 2. So the hydraulic radius, which is a over p, is equal to d over 4, where d is the sewer diameter, times 1 minus sine theta over theta. And the breadth of flow, b, is the sewer diameter times sine theta over 2. When the sewer is flowing just full, so that the depth of flow equals the sewer diameter, d equals d, then little a equals big A equals pi d squared over 4, p equals big P equals pi d, so that the hydraulic radius at full bore, big R, is d over 4. We can then express the ratios A over A and R over R in terms of theta, but more commonly we use the following expressions. Little a equals Ka d squared, 
and R equals KR, D, where both KR and KA are functions of theta. Normally we don't have to do all these calculations. Instead we use this table which gives the hydraulic elements of a circular section. So for various values of D over D in the first column on the left, we can read off the values of KA, KR, A over A, R over R, and also V over V and Q over Q, which we'll come to in a minute. The basic equation that we use is Manning's equation. And this says that the velocity in meters per second at the proportional depth of flow D over D is equal to 1 over n times r to the two-thirds, i to the half, where n is Manning's roughness coefficient and i is the sewer gradient. Now we know that flow is equal to area times velocity, q equals av, so that Manning's flow equation can be expressed as q equals 1 over n times little a, r to the two-thirds, i to the half. When the sewer is flowing just full, we use the same equations but write V, R, Q and A in capital letters. This enables us to calculate the velocity ratio V over V and Q over Q, the flow ratio, in terms of theta. Since theta is a function of the proportional depth of flow D over D, this means that V over V and Q over Q are both functions of D over D. And this chart shows how the ratios Q over Q and V over V vary with the depth of ratio, or the proportional depth of flow, d over d, as it varies from 0 to 1. There are three important points that this chart tells us. Firstly, little v equals big V at two values of d over d, when it equals 0.5 and when it equals 1. Secondly, there is a maximum velocity of flow and this occurs at a d over d value of 0.81 and it's 14% more than the velocity of flow at full pipe. Thirdly, there's also a maximum flow and this occurs at a d over d value of 0.94 and this is 7% greater than the flow at full pipe. 